in this installment, we're going to be going over the NBA bet slate for April 2nd on Tuesday. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Chef D, and I'm here to bring you the winning ingredients for our Tuesday NBA bet slate um, that we got going on. But before I deep dive into that, don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe to the channel. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MetsNetsChefD. Don't forget about that TikTok at Chef underscore D91. And don't forget about that Patreon. Um, right now, we're at the homepage of the YouTube channel, we're currently at 3.09 thousand subscribers. The goal is 5K. You guys are doing phenomenal. Um, we did uh, very good on our April 1st video. Well over 2,000 views on that. You guys are smashing in the likes. Everything is helping the YouTube algorithm, all right? All the subscribers continue to like and comment, all right? If you're not subscribed, join the community that we're building over here right now and subscribe to this channel, okay? Um, if you guys want exclusive bets for every day, we got MLB, we got NBA. We're going to be getting ready for the NBA playoffs, NBA finals, futures. If you want any of that, sign up for the Patreon right now. That link is provided down below. First game up, we got the Milwaukee Bucks, 47 and 27, going up against the Washington Wizards, 16, excuse me, 14 and 61. Um, looking at the current odds right now, Milwaukee Bucks as road favorites are minus 1,000 on the money line. The comeback on the Washington Wizards are at a plus 625. The point spread is at a 12 and a half for both sides, and the total is currently 228 and a half. All right, um, for the public bet percentage, 93% of the bets, 88% of the money going towards the Bucks money line. Uh, for the point spread, 64% of the bets, 55% of the money going towards Milwaukee to cover. And for the total, 90% um, of the bets, 89% of the money towards the over 228 and a half. All right. So for the injury report for the Milwaukee Bucks, everything is, is positive for them. Um, Patrick Beverly is going to be probable. And Marjan Bochamp is going to be probable as well. Uh, for the Washington Wizards, the opposite is going on. Kyle Kuzma will not play in this game, and Tyus Jones, their point guard, will not play in this game as well. All right, so these two teams have already played twice this year. If we're looking at the previous two matchups, that both of those games were wins by the Milwaukee Bucks. This is the third and final matchup between these two. The first game was a total of 271, and the second game was a total of 259. So very high-scoring environments for these two teams. Uh, and I, I see that um, continuing here, especially when you got Jordan Poole, Corey Kispert, those guys, they're going to be putting up shots in bunches, all right, trying to keep pace with the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, looking at the odds, where can we find some value, all right, because we're not taking that minus 1,000. I feel very confident in the Milwaukee Bucks covering uh, the 12 and a half, but I'm going to give you nine and a half, all right? Just, uh, they'll win by double digits. I'm going to give you nine and a half. Uh, Milwaukee Bucks to cover. And I like the over 228 and a half. These are two teams that are run at a very high pace and they put up points in bunches, okay? So this is, is going to be Bucks minus uh, nine and a half and Bucks over 228 and a half. Next game up, we have the Los Angeles Lakers, 42 and 33, going against the Toronto Raptors, 23 and 51 here. Um, looking at the current odds, we have the Lakers on the money line at a minus 900. They are the away favorites, um, with the Toronto Raptors on a comeback at a plus 575. The point spread is currently 11 and a half, and the total is 231 and a half. All right, looking at the public bet percentage, 93% of the bets, 86% of the money towards the Lakers' money line. For the point spread, 71% of the bets, 75% of the money towards the Lakers to cover. And for the total, 88% um, and 86% of the bets and money going towards the over 231 and a half. For the injury report, we got positive news on both sides. Uh, AD, LeBron James are currently, they're questionable every single game, obviously. 
Uh, so stay tuned to news because it w- could be one day that they are questionable and they decide to sit one or both. All right. So it's definitely stay towards the news. That's why I put that link down below for Roto Wire. All right. But for the Toronto Raptors, positive news here. Gary Trent Jr. had a rest day. So he's probably going to be back for this game on um, on Tuesday. Um, and the Raptors are getting back R.J. Barrett and Emmanuel quickly. So that's going to be a big factor here. Definitely is going to be uh, emotional for RJ Barrett. Um, so I expect a little bit of a, a different type of Toronto team. This is not going to be the team that's been getting smacked around every single day. All right. I think they're going to be a little bit more motivated in this particular matchup uh, with him coming back from his death of his uh, brother. A uh, very, very unfortunate um, event. So looking at these last, these two teams here. They played um, in January. That was a very high-scoring game. That was a total of 263. That was the LA Lakers win. Um, and in recent games, the Lakers have been playing phenomenally, winning four out of the last five. When uh, on the other side, the Raptors are on a 13-game losing streak. So they are super due right now. Super due. Uh, but looking at the line, where are we going to find some value? We're going to go with the plus 12 and a half for the Toronto Raptors. Give me those points um, for the Toronto Raptors, especially with R.J. Barrett and Emmanuel quickly coming back uh, to the to the lineup. And looking at against the spread numbers, the Lakers away, they're 14 and 19 away against the spread. And as favorites, they're 17 and 24 as favorites. So both of those numbers below 500. I'm taking the points with the Raptors in this game. And for the over-under, give me the over 232 it just went up live it just went up live give me the over 232 and a half these two teams as you saw in that first game put up 263 points not saying they're doing that again but they, both of these teams are going to be very close to that number they're going to put up a lot of points both of these teams score and it's the pace the pace that they run is very high um so that's why you have tendencies of these overs hitting especially for the lakers so the lakers are going to dictate pace Toronto's going to have to keep up pace and points will be scored. All right. So uh, Raptors plus 12 and a half in the over in this game. Next up, we have the New York Knicks here. Uh, 44 and 30 going against the Miami Heat. 41 and 33. Uh, current odds right now. We have Miami Heat um, as home favorites here on the money line at a minus 150 with the comeback of the New York Knicks at a plus 125. The current point spread is at two and a half for both sides. And the total is at 207 and a half. All right. So full game uh, public bet percentage here. 79% of the bets, 54% of the money towards Miami Heat to win. For the point spread, 60% of the bets, 64% of the money towards Miami Heat to cover. And for the total, 97%. Of the bets, 98% of the money towards the over 207 and a half. All right. Uh, For the uh, injury report right now, Mitchell Robinson, the main key factor for the injury, um, for the injuries of the New York Knicks. He is currently questionable in this game. He'd obviously be a great addition to the team here going up against Bam and Abayo. All right. Uh, For the Miami Heat, everyone's coming back and they're all probable. Nikola Jovic, probable. Terry Rozier, probable. Duncan Robinson, probable. Caleb Martin, probable. So they're going to be fully, they're going to be 100% ready here for the New York Knicks. And this is a very highly motivated spot here uh, between the Knicks and the Miami Heat. These two teams have already played twice and both games went towards the New York Knicks. Very surprising here. Both of those games were in New York. We have a change of scenery here in Miami and we got a big motivation spot. Knicks. Uh, are playing uh, very weird. Uh, they should have won that game against the Thunder and wind up missing numerous free throws in the last minute to give the game to the Oklahoma City Thunder. And they lost to the San Antonio Spurs. Miami Heat is uh, playing a little bit better basketball here. Blew out the Portland Trail Blazers. Blew out Washington Wizards. Now they got a motivation spot here against the Knicks. We're going with a clean sweep here. Give me the Miami Heat on the money line. Give me Miami Heat to cover and give me the over 207 and a half. This game up, we have a battle of East versus West here. 
Oklahoma City Thunder 52 and 22 going up against the Philadelphia 76ers who are 40 and 35. Uh, looking at the current odds right now, Thunder on the money line as road favorites at a minus 210 with the comeback of the Philadelphia 76ers at a plus 170. Uh, point spread right now is at a five and a half and the total is at 223 and a half. All right, for the public bet percentage, 77% of the bets, 90% of the money towards the Thunder on the money line. For the point spread, 68% of the bets, 71% of the money towards the Thunder to cover. And for the total, 96% of the bets, 87% of the money towards the over 223 and a half. All right, for the injury report, we got major injuries here or probably rest for the Oklahoma City Thunder. Um, obviously, they're gearing up for the playoffs and SGA and Jalen Williams are currently questionable. All right. Uh, we would definitely like to know more information, but that's all that we know for, for right now. They're both questionable, and that's going to definitely weigh heavily um, on this line and who we're going to choose. So I would highly advise to wait and make your decision on this game until you get the full injury report a little bit later today. Uh, and then for the Philadelphia 76ers here, we're, um, we're waiting on news for Tyrese Maxey. He's questionable. So these are three very important players to their teams. Um, and we really can't get a great gist of where to lean. Because if I tell you the point spread on the Sixers and then uh, SGA and Jalen is in, but Maxey's out, then that's going to be definitely bad, bad news there. But, but we'll continue on. For the regular season, these two teams have already played. And that was the 76ers win in November. And that total was 250. All right. Um, so, so far right now, Thunder are playing well in the last two games, beating Phoenix, beating New York. Um, and then the 76ers just blew out the Toronto Raptors here. But you have the, the Thunder on the road against the Philadelphia team that is very hungry, trying to stay uh, where they're at or move up in that playoff race. OK, um, so so far right now, so far right now, I'm going to give you the total. All right. We need more news about the injury report. And then you can definitely I'll, I'll post um, where I'm leaning when I get the full news report. But as of right now, give me the over 223 and a half. Uh, both of these teams run a very fast pace. Both of these teams shoot threes at a very high clip. Um, even if FGA is out there, these two teams will be putting up points. Give me the over 223 and a half between these two. Um, if we're looking at uh, away favorites, the Oklahoma City Thunder are 16 to 8 towards the over. All right. 16 to 8 towards the over. That's why I'm leaning towards the over in this game uh, at 223 and a half. Next up, we have a Southwest Division versus Northwest Division matchup. Houston Rockets, 38 and 36. Uh, coming off their very long win streak, losing to the Dallas Mavericks, going up against the Minnesota Timberwolves, 51 and 23. Looking at the current odds right now, we have the home favorite Timberwolves at a minus 300, with the comeback of the Houston Rockets at a plus 230. Uh, for the point spread, seven and a half on both sides, with the over under at 215 and a half. All right. Uh, for the public bet percentage, 91% of the bets, 86% of the money towards the money line of the Timberwolves. For the point spread, the opposite, 58% of the bets and money towards the Rockets to cover. And for the total, we have 93% bets and money towards the over 215 and a half. For the injury report, these are the guys that have been out for the for a very long time. So, and they're not coming back. So you don't need to worry about the injury report there. Um, for the regular season matchups, these two teams have already played twice. Both of these games were blowout wins by the Minnesota Timberwolves, okay? The first game was a total of two, uh, 217, and the second game was a total of a, a total of 201, all right? This is the third and final matchup here. Like I said, both these teams were on red-hot winning streaks and then losing um, their previous game. So one of these two teams are going to lose two games in a row, all right? But... One team can't afford to lose two games in a row, and that team will be the Houston Rockets. So we're going to be going with the Houston Rockets uh, with that with the points there. Give me those plus seven and a half. If you want to bump it up to eight or nine, fine. Be my guest. But this is going to be the highly more motivated team here. Must win situation. Minnesota comfortable. They're they're fine where they're at at the top of their division um, and conference. Uh, so. 
Give me the Houston Rockets plus seven and a half and give me the under 215 and a half. If I'm looking at against the spread numbers of over unders as home favorites, the Timberwolves are 12 and 19 towards the under. And for the Rockets, for the total entirety of this season, they're 33 and 37 towards the under. Both of these numbers are in favor of the under. So I'm going to be going with against the grain here. Against what we're seeing uh, with the public bet percentage, drop public bet percentage. Give me the under 215. Next game, we have the Cleveland Cavaliers, who are 45 and 30, going up against the Utah Jazz, 29 and 46. Looking at the current odds here, Cavs on the money line at a minus 900, uh, with the get back of the Utah Jazz at plus 600. The point spread is at a 12 and a half for both sides, and the total is set at 217. All right, for the public bet percentage, 92% of the bets and 60% of the money towards the Cleveland Cavaliers on the money line. For the point spread, 72% of the bets on Utah Jazz to cover, but 73% of the money is on the Cavs to cover. And for the total, we have 98% of the bets, 98% of the money towards the over 217 and a half, all right? Uh, for the injury report for the Cleveland Cavaliers, Isaac Okaro is out. Um, Craig Porter Jr. is out, and Dean Wade is currently questionable uh, for the Cleveland Cavaliers, but they do have their main guy, Donovan Mitchell, back, so that's a great positive there. Utah Jazz injury report, John Collins out, Laurie Markkinen out for the year, and Jordan Clarkson out as well, so there's a lot of holes in the Utah Jazz's offense here, a lot of motivation. They lost their leader and their six-man and then their next best power forward. So there, there's a lot of holes here uh, for the Utah Jazz. They, these two teams have already played earlier in the season. That was a eight-point win by the Cleveland Cavaliers, and that total was uh, 240 points, okay? High total in that game doesn't mean it's going to be in this one uh, here. For the Cleveland Cavaliers, they've been up and down since they just recently got their main guy back in Donovan Mitchell. And then the Utah Jazz are on a nine-game losing streak. They are tanking. They're really going down hard and fast. Uh, obviously, Lori Markin and losing your heart and soul of your team is one of those key factors. All right, so where are we going to be looking for value? I like the Cleveland Cavaliers to cover this number at 12 and a half, but I'm going to be giving you out nine and a half. If you feel comfortable with 12 and a half, go ahead. I think that this is a spot where uh, that this team is decimated with injury. Cavaliers are trying to get ready for the playoffs. They should be able to cover this number, but I'm going to give out nine and a half. But Cavs should definitely win by double digits. And if I'm choosing an over and under, I'm going to go with the under 217 and a half. I'm going to go against the grain here in the total points. We're missing a lot of key guys here with the Utah Jazz and the benefit of the Cavaliers. They're a very strong defensive team here, all right? Uh, against the spread numbers, as away favorites, they are 7 and 12 towards the under. Uh, so that's where I'm going to be leaning towards. I'm leaning towards the Cleveland Cavaliers defense, especially to secondary players on the Utah Jazz. So give me the Cavs to cover nine and a half and the under 217 and a half. Next game up, we have the San Antonio Spurs, 18 and 57 going against the Denver Nuggets, 52 and 23. Uh, for the Spurs, well, excuse me, for the Nuggets, they are minus 2,000 on the money line. Huge favorites at home. Um, on the get back, the San Antonio Spurs at a plus 950 with the point spread at a 15 and a half. Uh, the current total is at 223 and a half. All right. Um, for the public bet percentage, 96% of the bets and 83% of the money towards Denver. For the point spread, 72% of the bets, 66% of the money towards the Spurs. And for the total, 98% of the bets, 98% of the money towards the over 223 and a half. For the San Antonio Spurs, they are resting a lot of guys, all right? Devin Vassell out for the year. Uh, Dominic Barlow out. Keldon Johnson out. Jeremy Sochan out for the year. So all these key components around Victor Wimbenyama are going to miss this game here. Um, and for the Denver Nuggets, we're getting positive news. Aaron Gordon, probable. Uh, Nikola Jokic, probable. And Jamal Murray is currently questionable. If he's probable, you get the whole band and crew back together. That does not spell well for the San Antonio Spurs. All right, these two teams have already played twice already. They're going to play two more times. This is their third matchup here. The first game was a total of 252. The second game was a total of 223. 
Um, and looking at this line here, we're going to need to find value because the minus 2000 is just way too much. I'm going to be going with the Nuggets. All right. Nuggets at minus 15 and a half. Uh, especially at home, I feel very confident in the Denver Nuggets at home going up against a, a San Antonio Spurs team and, that are missing key components. All right. Four key guys, Keldon, Sochan, Devin Vassell, all those guys are going to be missing out of this game here. I think that's too much uh, going up against this uh, high power Denver Nuggets team, especially if Jamal Murray gets a uh, move to probable. I'm going to be feeling very confident in my Denver Nuggets to cover the spread at 15 and a half. I'm going to be giving out the nine and a half. All right. For the total, I'm going to be leaning towards the over 223 and a half. There's a lot of situations where you're tempted to go towards the under in Denver Nuggets games, but they put up such a high pace or they just blow out teams um, so much that it they just cover the number anyway. So give me the over 223 and a half in the cover of the Nuggets at a minus nine and a half. Let's move on to the next game. Second to last here, Dallas Mavericks, 45 and 29, going up against the Golden State Warriors, 40 and 34. Looking at the current odds here, we have the Dallas Mavericks. Oh, they're not favored the underdogs. We have the Golden State Warriors favorited here at a minus 115 with the Dallas Mavericks on the comeback at a minus 105. This is a pick em game. That's why you see the spread at a one, one and a half, all right? P pretty much a pick em. Um, for the total is currently set at 232 and a half. All right. For the public bet percentage, 58% of the bets towards the Warriors, while 63% of the money is towards the Mavericks to win. For the point spread, 59% uh, of the bets, 56% of the money towards Dallas to cover the one and a half. And for the total, 84% uh, of the bets and money towards the over 232 and a half. All right. So for the injury report here, for the Dallas Mavericks, Josh Green is going to be out. Derek Lively is currently questionable. And for the Warriors, Klay Thompson is probable. And Jonathan Kaminga is currently questionable. All right. So definitely stay tuned to, to news uh, on the Warriors side with Kaminga if he's going to be in or out. These two particular teams have already played twice. One of those games were was postponed. Um, and right now, uh, the series is towards the Dallas Mavericks 2-0. Dallas Mavericks beat them twice already. So we have a double revenge narrative here. The first game was a total of 254, and the second game was a total of 208. So we have two stark differences here between the totals, one going super over, one going super under, and the current total here is set at 232. So the stat I'm going to lean on in this particular game is going to be as home favorites, as home favorites, the Golden State Warriors are 11 and 19 towards the under. All right, they're going to be winning off of defense here. Uh, so we're going to be going with the under 232 and a half in this game environment. They're highly motivated, trying to stay in that uh, in that race. They have the Houston Rockets on their heels. Um, I get it. Mavericks are just as motivated, too. They're in a seven game winning streak. But this is a spot here where this Jekyll and Hyde team will be more Hyde than Jekyll. So we're going to be going with the Golden State Warriors to win on the money line here. Double revenge narrative. Give me the Golden State Warriors on the money line and give me the under 232 and a half in this game. Last but not least, we have the L.A. Clippers who are 47 and 27 going against the Sacramento Kings who are 43 and 31. Uh, for the odds currently, we have the road favorites in the LA Clippers at a minus 135 with the comeback of the Kings at a plus 110. The current point spread is at a two and a half and the total is set at 222 and a half. All right. Uh, for the public bet percentage, 78% of the bets, 73% of the money towards the, uh, Clippers to win. For the point spread, 63% of the bets and 64% of the money towards the Clippers to cover. And for the total, 98% of the bets, 96% of the money towards the over 222 and a half. All right. For the injury report, um, at no one, no injuries for the Clippers and for the Kings. Uh, Malik Monk out for the year and Kevin Herter out for the year. So they're missing some two key shooting guards uh, for the Sacramento Kings. But they do have Keon Ellis who's been a very good fill-in uh, for Malik Monk and uh, Kevin Herter. 
Um, so he's going to be starting in this game. So for this, these two teams, they've already played three times. This is the fourth and final matchup. So far, the Clippers are winning the series two to one. The first game was a total of 248. The second game was a total of 218. And the third game was a total of two, uh, 230. Okay. Uh, so looking at where we can find value, obviously the bad news of the Kings of Malik Monk and Kevin Herter out for the year. That's that's really the reason why this line is towards the Clippers as favorites on the road. Um, if we're looking at against the spread numbers, they're 15 and 13 as away favorites, but but as underdogs, the Sacramento Kings are 15 and eight, very strong as underdogs, the Kings, 15 and eight as underdogs. So we're gonna be going with the plus two and a half in this particular game. And if we're going to choose the over under, I'm going to be leaning towards the under. All right. Um, as away favorites, uh, the Kings are 13 and 15. And as home underdogs, um, the Kings are one and three towards the under. So both of these trends going towards the under. I'm going to be leaning towards the under in this game at 222 and a half. Uh, I believe I even think the Kings can even get this win here. A lot of people last game of the night. Uh, Kings are missing two guys. Uh, Clippers looking like they're getting healthy. And uh, Clippers are a hard team to trust as well. But I'm going to be going with the Kings as, as underdogs. They're a sleeper team here. Uh, and, and I like them as underdogs as well. So if you want to take the money line, go ahead and be my guest at that plus 110. All right. I'm going to be giving out plus two and a half and under 225. So that's going to be the slate for Tuesday. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MessNetsJetsD. Let me know in that comment section down below. What do you think? What's your opinion on some of these games and some of these leans I'm going with? Comment down below. I know I got a troll down there and T-Bangers. Thank you for commenting yet again. And keep hating on my picks. That's, that's fine by me. That's fine by me. I enjoy all of it. It's all love. It's all love, all right? And I'll be back with another video very soon, all right? Peace out.